Howdy folks, Nathan Adlin here with the Fast Lane Truck and we have a very special top five for you. Here's my friend, Andre, and Kent of MrTruck.com. What do we got this week? First of all, I wanted to say I'm so excited because it's rare for all of us to be here at the same time. Yeah, that's awesome stuff. But we have a very special episode for you and it's the top five tips to match your truck to your trailer. And all of this information is, well, manufactured and produced from the book that these boys put together. Chapter four. Yep, <laughs> so Kent and I co-wrote and you had a chapter in the book as well. Yep. It's called Truck Nuts, the TFL Trucks Guide to Pickup Trucks. And you can find it on Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble. So let's anyway, you can it. find this book everywhere and we're gonna be at the Texas State Fair in at the end of September promoting yes. the book. September 30th, come see us. Yep. We yeah. don't know where we'll we be. We don't know where we'll be. We'll be there somewhere. <laughs> but, but it's a small fair. You'll usually find them. But anyway, come see us anyways. We'll be so, on top of big text. Let's get this started right away with number five. And remember, this is the top five tips to match your trailer to your truck. And number five, well, go ahead, Andre. Check your weight ratings, not only for your truck, but also for your trailer. Um, and we get these questions all the time. Yeah. You know, you guys write to us. We get them on our YouTube channel, on our website. Most of the time, people only check the max tow rating on your truck. Right. Okay, yeah. it tows 12,000 pounds, I'm done. Can I go home now? Right. It's well, not that easy, right? No, there's a lot to it. There's axle weight rating, there's your payload rating, there's several things, numbers you need to make the right proper choice to match your truck to your trailer. That's what it's all about. If you have the right size, then your bearings are all working together, your springs are all working together, your brakes are all working, everything's making you safe. But if you have overloaded those numbers, then you're jeopardizing your warranty, you're jeopardizing your insurance, you're jeopardizing your life. All those things can be Well, let's, let's give them an example of what you're talking about. I mean, it's easy enough for us to spout what the rules are, but let's say you have a truck that weighs, oh, I don't know, say about uh, 6,000 pounds, small truck. Mm -hmm. And let's say you have a trailer that weighs 10,000 pounds. Now, how would we ascertain whether or not we're towing the right amount of weight. I mean, obviously we have to combine those two weights together, right? So that's 16,000 pounds. Right, you're combining weight rating, but you've also got to look up probably on the website or the manufacturer's website, what your gross trailer uh, capacity is, what your gross combined weight rating is, what your rear axle weight rating is, and then you, you know, get your tongue weight figured out, and you have to know your payload. You have to have all those numbers. Exactly, payload is a huge thing. Um, so let, let me just hit please. that point that you brought up. So you have a 10,000 pound trailer, um, and it's a bumper pull on the hitch uh, right. behind the truck. You have to have about 10% tongue weight, right? Right. That's, so that's, that's a, a thousand pounds of tongue weight right there. Right. Um, so if your truck has, for example, 1,500 pounds of payload capacity, right. you only have 500 pounds left over to play with. So you have to equate what that tongue weight is with your payload as well, yes. right. which some people don't do, right. uh, and they, they really just ignore that. They yeah. just ignore that, and they really should be doing that. And that's exactly. a big problem with truck manufacturers. They come up with this giant trailer weight rating, <laughs> and it doesn't get to your payload. You're never going to get that number to actually equal your payload by tongue weight. So it doesn't really matter that giant number if you don't have enough payload left over to pull that trailer. So they're and talking about a capacity that technically speaking cannot be reached. Right, unless you have some kind of one-legged driver with no fuel, maybe take the seats out. It's the same <laughs> what they think you should do to get those numbers. So that's a really good point. And let's move this on to number four, which is the towing laws, because that is part of this, isn't it? Yeah, the towing laws get really confusing. You know, I'm a CDL and there's, the, there's a, the DOT, the commercial side, which starts in before your CDL. And basically CDL is pretty uniform, but a lot of states, especially in the East Coast, they'll add some more Class A's and some other things. So it's very confusing. Can you explain what a CDL actually is? Well, CDL, that's commercial driver's license, and that's 26,001 combined truck and trailer, if you're commercial. But the CDL laws and the DOT laws are very close. It's just the weight limits. Actually, if you're commercially doing things with your truck and trailer, your combined weight rating only has to be 10,001 to where the DOT law is starting, which is almost the same thing without the license. It's still all the other things, the logbook, the, the, the physical you have to take. So. so is it safe to say, though, that state to state, the laws are a little different, and in some cases, they're very different? Yeah, yeah, and it's, and it's sad. The CDL was supposed to eliminate that. But it gets very complicated. You go to California, I think they make a new trader law every six months or something. So it's very difficult to keep up with the law. Exactly, very hard to do. It gets really complicated, and we're here to help you guys, right? Yep. So <laughs> in the book, we have a lot of that information, right? Right, and that's why we wrote the book, because it is complicated. We want to be able to give you good advice, whether it's diesel versus gas, or whether it's you know how to hook up your trader, all the things you need to do there, and keeping your teenage drivers safe, 
and all those things. We try to cover all that that we think are issues that aren't covered anywhere else. So that's now you had just mentioned issues, and that brings to mind number three, which is the weight ratings of hitches and balls because frankly there are ratings a lot of people don't know this they just assume that they could just slap it on and go right right oh wait a minute where's our hitch oh oh our hitch is in the truck out there can you go get it? it's a hundred pound hitch yeah there it goes holy cow i, I couldn't lift it that far he actually hooks it to his loins and does uh, sit ups eight pounds. <laughs> these badass russians man that's not this look at the balls on that hitch okay hold on a second yeah yeah catch your breath all right, editing can handle this. I've been running around the block with a 80 pound hitch, so it's my daily exercise. Uh, Ginny Hitch, that Very our partner hitch. of ours. Right. Very well made hitch. And that's too. So you got all these things you have to figure out on knowing your hitch rating, your ball rating, all that. You got to know your receiver hitch on your truck. What's it rated to tow? And then when you get your stinger hitch or your adjustable hitch like this is, you got to know what this is rated to tow. This one's what, 16,000? Yeah. So. And look, look, the top of this ball, this is 2 and 5 16. Right, right. right. It actually says, I don't know if you can see that, 16,000 16, pounds. That's good. Each ball will tell you that. And see, that's like a lot of times you'll go into like a Walmart or a U-Haul, and the ball may only say 5,000 pounds. Well, you don't know. You just grab but, it. It's a 2 and 5 sixteenths ball. Yeah, it'll I'll, fit. I'll grab it. And yeah. it won't fit very long because it'll break off. So, yeah, that's important to know all your ratings. I mean, that, that's trucks are complicated. There's a lot of details you need to figure out to be safe, and this is one of them. And also your pins, right? So. The pins that Hitch is connected with right. also have weight ratings. Yeah, they do. They do. They all have. And you know, and this is a boxed in each time. This is an amazing capacity truck or, or a hitch. But we used to call these stingers. Now they're called adjustable hitches. And, that, and it's nice to have an adjustable hitch because when you hook up your trailer, if your trailer is pointed too much the wrong way, your brakes won't activate right. The, the one hanging in the air might lock up on you. So adjustable hitch is one of my favorite things because that way you can level out your trailer, being loaded or being empty. And this brings us to number two. This is it a does. perfect transition, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And that's number two is the weight distributing hitch. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. Weight distributing hitch. This one has one too we use that fits in here and then has spring arms to go to your trailer, the brackets. Now, I'm going to let you viewers in on a little secret about attaching spring arms, trunnion bars. You can force them on with a lever. Lever goes under it, and you can pop it into the bracket like that. But if you're an old fart like me, you'll use the jack to take pressure off the trunnion bar. That's a little easier to put it together. And the whole idea of a weight distributing hitch is to distribute the weight. So it'll actually move weight to the front axle of your truck. It'll actually, all the, the the trailer axles, the truck axles, they all get adjusted to have to carry weight equally. And that's what you want. You want some steering weight on the front. And if you look in your owner's manual, a lot of the, the manufacturers will tell you if it's over 5,000 pounds that you're required to use a weight distributing hitch, which is what we do. We're, we're all within compliant of that. And that uh, also, it, a lot of them have built-in sway control because a, a bumper pull trailer can sway. A truck can go by you, somebody can catch you off in the road, and your trailer goes into the swaying situation. So you want some kind of built-in sway into the weight distributing hitch. Now, is there a rule or a law requiring that, let's say, uh, above 5,000 pounds, below 5,000 pounds of trailer weight? It's a recommendation, except if you look at owner's manual from GM, they require it, which means it can affect your warranty, it can affect your insurance. Now, Ram and Ford, they say it's recommended. Event, I think they'll, they'll change their verbiage eventually, but you know you want to be in compliance with that because you don't want to lose your insurance. You don't want to, you know, somehow you don't get paid for your crashed car, your crashed truck, or you know to have your, your warranty uh, disabled or, or, or lack up. So it's, it's an important issue, and it's a safety issue for you. You don't want this thing breaking off and your trailer flying into a school bus. So it's all about keeping us all safe because I might be following you. So right. I'm concerned. <laughs> And this is all, once again, illustrated in the book. Yes, we yeah. talk about weight distributing hitches and hitches and adjusting the hitches and all that. Yeah. And one of the questions I had when I saw this hitch, you know, first of all, the, how much it weighs. Yeah. I had a question in my head, well, does that affect my rating? You know, this is almost 80 pounds, but as soon as you add a weight distributing hitch, you distribute the weight through the truck and trailer. So this weight is almost you know, not even noticed. Right, you actually will change that tongue weight will go toward the front axle. All that yeah. gets adjusted out of it. And so if you guys are buying aluminum hitches, right, mm -hmm. that's an option, right? You can buy an aluminum hitch from whatever manufacturer it may be um, to decrease your weight of your actual hitch. But right. it's not a big deal, is it? Right, and this is actually part of the payload, but you're, you're looking at the entire 
weight of your truck and your trailer and, and, and then you weigh all those things individually so you'll have a proper rating. But uh, yeah, yeah. All right, let's get to number one, which is a huge question, and that's mid-size truck versus half-ton truck versus heavy-duty truck. I have an example for this. No, no, this is in reference, but you, and, and the example is going to come up when we talk about what the trailer is. Remember, we're matching trailer to truck, so yeah. go ahead with the example. We get so many questions like this. So we recently had a question where one of you guys said, um, I want to get a 25-foot Airstream trailer. I want to, you know, I'm retired, I want to travel the country, and I want to, the GMC Canyon Duramax, the diesel truck, midsize, is really attractive to me. Yeah. It has good fuel economy, you know, it's a pretty nice towing vehicle. Is that the right combination? Can I, should I buy the Canyon to tow my 25-foot trailer, and by the weight rating it matches, right? The trailer maximum weight is 7,300 pounds. The Canyon is rated, the 4x4 at 7,600 pounds. So he's like, I'm safe, right? Yeah, and that's part of the numbers game. You're looking at that to figure it out, and it's confusing, but a midsize, and I love this, that Durham, it was our truck of the year last year, mm -hmm. so I'm happy with it. But if you get a midsize, you're a narrower wheelbase, you're a shorter wheelbase, and you know, then you got problems with mirrors. If you're pulling an eight and a half foot RV, you may never see the sides of that trailer. Yeah, that's there. something that people don't consider usually. Right, and if they look at the length of the trailer, right? Right. And the weight ratings, but you have to consider how wide this trailer is. We noticed all that when we were actually doing that pull, when the MPG pulled some of that, that you know, just uh, the fact that your wheelbase of your trailer was so much wider than the wheelbase of the truck that you could feel it moving you. Mm -hmm. And that's why the weight distribution hitch was a big important thing to control some of that sway. But, you know, you do, you mean, you, a little truck and a big trader, it doesn't take a whole lot to figure out that it may not be the best combination. So all that factors in, and so in that case, I would not get a big trader and a little truck. I mean, I've done it before, but it's not my first recommendation. Yeah, I mean, if you're going across town, right, it's okay, but yeah. if you're towing thousands of miles and you want to go to mountainous areas. Well, a half ton or three, you know, larger truck, obviously. Yeah, so that, would be, that would be preferable, even though, you know, we like the Canyon so much because fuel efficiency is It's, it's great. a very yeah. fuel efficient, yeah. well put together little truck. But you also need to have a margin of safety, right? Right. If you can tow 7,600 pounds by the manufacturer, yeah. you want to have a 10 or 15% safety margin yeah. in your weight. And I put that in the book too. I mean, what I call dead weight, you know, whatever it is, RV, it doesn't move anywhere. You can get close to those maximum ratings if everything else falls in line. But if you're pulling like a horse or a buffalo or something with the butts four feet off the ground swatting flies, I always go back 15% because of all that movement. Yeah, right. So you want to think about your cargo. And that's in the book. It's, now, it's all in the book. I yeah, think. That's, it is all in the book, folks. So let's go to the bonuses. Okay. Let's. What about crossing your chains, lifting the jack, and greasing the balls? Okay, it's you all talk about greasing the balls. I can cover the other ones. But. All right, you start with crossing <laughs> chains. Can you tell us your story? It happened to me. I was in Kansas picking up some hitches or something, and I took off in the rain, so I was in a hurry. I didn't get the latch in the trader coupler. Ooh. And I always cross my chains, and I always run the jack all the way up. And then what happened to me, I was bouncing down the interstate, and the trader came off, and I looked at my rearview mirrors, and the trader was kind of doing this. And I thought, wow, that's kind of a weird way. That's to a lot of motion, move. isn't it? Yeah. So I grabbed the trader brake controller, not the foot brake, the brake controller for the trader only, and slowed it down and got over the side of the road, and it worked really well. Got over there, and there it was. It was off the ball. And so all, and because I had my jack all the way up, nothing was damaged. So what was it riding on? The trailer? It was right on the chains. Yeah, the tongue was actually was cradled on. in the chains. That's why they say to cross the chains. So it's so a cross helped. chain and then the, the actual tongue from the trailer Land fell on down it. on it and, and sat and there And saved slightly. it, basically. Right. And because my jack was all the way up, it didn't drag down the concrete and break the jack off because you still got to lift it up and put it back on the truck. Right. So I was able to do all that in the rain without very minimum damage. So those two things help me, and that's why it's the same way with the breakaway cable. People don't like your breakaway cable. Well, in that situation, it doesn't break away when you're just dropping your trailer. It's if everything comes unhooked, that breakaway cable will actually lock up the trailer so it stops where you are instead of flying out into that school bus. Right. And that's what you want. And you have 15 minutes to go get the rock, put it behind the wheel so it doesn't roll into traffic, and then try to hook up and do all those things. So the safety chain, the, the breakaway cable, all those things are very important. But what about greasing the balls, Andre? Well. Um, it's metal to metal, right? So you don't you don't want it's going to wear out fast if you don't grease your balls, and we usually do that, right? We do. We, we grease the front of the ball and a little bit on the top, and that's what you want. You want 
it to last. You don't want to make a bunch of noise, but you know, why would you wear out a hitch and a coupler when you don't have to? I mean, so a little bit, uh, basically, the lubrication that you're putting on there will prevent or at least mitigate some of the wear on that ball and make it last longer and, right. and, and the hitch as well. Yeah, the ball is easy to replace, but the couplers are not easy to replace. You got to cut them off or bolt Weld them off. Weld it, or, yeah, yeah you know, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Of course, you know, we all know, you know, to grease the bearings right. on the trailer because that's really important. You don't want to have a seized bearing like I had on my boat trailer, remember that? Yeah. And I basically lost the wheel and the wheel didn't roll down the road, it actually just kind of just broke away but stayed with the trailer fortunately. But, oh sure, you're watching semi grease the fifth wheel, I mean they got great big plates and there's a ton of grease they put on there and they got grooves in there to hold the grease in there, it's important. Yeah. Absolutely, so guys thank you so much for joining us. We have a lot of videos that are coming out very soon with top fives, top tens and everything else and it's including of course Mr. Truck. So don't forget to look for the brand new book, Truck Nuts. Remember when you're looking it up to put in book as well or else you're gonna find something else. Uh, thanks again, guys. Thank you, boys. We'll see you later. Kent, what are we doing here at midnight at the, uh, our, at the bottom of our eye gauntlet? Well, we have a 2017 Super Duty F450 Platinum, but we're towing 30,000 pounds. And this is the Super Eye Gauntlet, but it's more than that. Yeah. It's the ultimate midnight Super Eye Gauntlet. Yes, all that and a bag of chips. That is so cool.